is they will be stationing the animals. They will be asking the animals to stay in front of them while that gate goes up. Keep your eye on Biosa, the animal over at the left in the center of all three. She is the dominant animal and often during these gate sessions, she is, you, you'd be pretty curious. You'd go right over there and see what's going on. Well, this is Biosa's habitat. She is uh, the dominant animal. She's often very curious as to what's going on in her home. And, and uh, so the uh, we do body checks on the animals several times throughout the day, looking for any new scratches, any uh, war marks uh, possibly on their body. This gives us a good indication of uh, if anything's been going on. Often if, uh, if it is uh, sexually interested in Biosa, his rostrum actually becomes warm. And these are different things that we, uh, we check out um, with the killer whales. And it lets us know what type of uh, social interactions are going on with the killer whales and uh, that enables us to uh, decide what type of session we're going to have um, throughout the day, whether we go into a higher energy exercise session or a more uh, laid back uh, social uh, or uh, husbandry session, just like what we're doing right now. We just had a very good uh, gate session with the animals and uh, Finn was just a, a little bit, uh, left to island just a little bit, but we, uh, we just ended on that note because uh, Biosa had done so well. And there's a good look at uh, Finna's uh, fluke or right. tail, and uh, Joanne is just giving it a very uh, light rub there, uh, as well as she's examining his uh, tail again for any marks, and doing a, uh, a setup for, for taking blood. This is actually how we take blood from the killer whales. We have a, a series of vessels that are very near the, uh, the surface on the, uh, the ventral side of their, their tail or fluke section, and uh, what we would have is our veterinarian would just come in and insert the uh, the needle into one of those vessels and uh, draw blood from there. So we, we do these uh, tail or fluke presents uh, quite often, several times a day, so that the uh, the animals are used to presenting their uh, their tails for the trainers and that the blood is only taken maybe uh, maybe once a month. So 99% uh, of the time, uh, they never have the uh, the needle inserted into their vessel and it's, and it's uh, a, stays a very positive behavior. Now the sound of the whistle, properly and he'll uh, stop that behavior and come back for some type of reinforcement. Indy right now is getting a very good look at, uh, at Biosa's side. Um, there, there's a special um, cue or, or SD as we call it for each behavior and uh, this is a behavior that we actually use with uh, Biosa and Aurora as well during uh, their pregnancies for doing an ultrasound and uh, by uh, actual just light pressure of their hands uh, the trainers are able to move the, uh, the animals in any direction that they want, stop them at any time so that they can look at each, uh, at each portion of the body. That exhale there gives us a, gives us a good look at uh, Biosa's blowhole inside. We look to see if there's any uh, mucus, just like people, um, killer whales and uh, dolphins get colds. Um, it lets us know uh, and, uh, her uh, white wings are on the bluegills. Um, they're eating whole squid and have uh, the tentacles attached. Now, uh, for some reason, Biosa uh, will spit out the squid if they actually have the tentacles attached. So what we've done uh, previously is actually we pulled the tentacles and, and heads off of uh, Biosa's squid and just given her the, the end of the body part. And uh, we've decided that uh, we're going to start giving uh, Biosa the whole squid. So we're just gradually working up to that. And what we've done that right now is just cut the squid, uh, just actually have a good, sign, good look at uh, Finna's fluke. Gives you a good indication of the difference in size between male and female. Squirting water out of their mouth is something a lot of whales do, mostly because it feels good. It's sort of like a massage therapy. Uh, their tongues are extremely sensitive areas. And oh, look at that. There goes Biosa. What a wonderful view of the size of a female killer whale compared to a person. That fly out area skin to help them move and cut through uh, all that resistance. Biosa and India have moved to the back. Does anyone know where Finna went this time? Oh, there we go. Oh. <laughs> we can see a much larger animal now doing a breach as well over here at the right. Finna weighs about twice as much as Biosa. So you can imagine how much energy it takes to move him out of the water. Now I have a feeling that Joanne asked Finna for the same behavior once again. Looks like she's asking him for quite a bit of exercise this session. Follow the white patches on his body. Those will give you a hint to where he is. Pretty hard to see him, isn't it? 
Imagine being a fish underneath Finna and he's sneaking up on you right now. Boy, if you're underneath him, you'd be in trouble. Reaching is something killer whales will use as a feeding tool. How many fish do you think Finna could have killed with one blow of his body like that? Ooh. Many, right? They can, they can smash their, uh, or they can slam their huge bodies right into the middle of a school of fish and stun or kill hundreds with one blow, making feeding much easier. So perching isn't just for exercise, but it can be used as a feeding tool as well. There's a good view of Whitewing's body over here at the right, and you'll notice that the color of the animals are comfortable in working with the trainers all over the different areas of the habitat. Sometimes, did you know that the trainers will work with the animals from outside? They may work with them even from the seating area. Sometimes they will ask them from behaviors from underwater viewing through the windows. And this is all to keep things different. So the animals uh, don't get bored. They never get into a set pattern or routine. The trainers are always trying to keep the whales uh, on their flukes, so to speak. Trying to teach them new things and stimulate their minds. In the back right now, look how easy it is to spot Fiosa when she's upside down. Look at that big white belly. She's almost glowing, she's so bright. You can see, however, when she rolls back over, right side up, she virtually disappears. This is camouflage pretty much at its best. The whales are camouflaged with their surroundings, that dark back. Look at here in the front again. If you miss Fiosa in the back, look at Finna. You can really see exactly where he is. There's that huge underbelly, white underbelly, and white tail flukes. Camouflage. A lot of animals have camouflage. Does anyone know what an animal would need camouflage for? What do you think? To keep them uh, hidden so hunters can't kill them. That's exactly true. Most animals have camouflage for protection. Exactly. But you know what? I'll tell you something. Killer whales have no enemies. There's nothing out there in the open ocean that will eat an adult killer whale. Why would a killer whale need camouflage? Somebody said from people, from hunters, and that's true. That would certainly protect them from hunters. Uh, however, these guys have had camouflage long before people ever really started shooting whales uh, and hunting whales. What would be another reason, either than protection? What do you think? Yeah, exactly. The person down here at the bottom got it uh, exactly right on the nail. So whatever they are hunting can't see them. Can you imagine if the whales were completely white? Finna is huge. If he was sneaking up on a school of herring, that school would see him coming from a very far distance. Having this camouflage allows him to be an effective hunter. And all the other animals uh, that are hunters and have camouflage. <laughs> there goes Vioso with a bob spurt. Now I mentioned that squirting water is something that feels really good on the animal's tongues, but it's something the trainers will ask for as well to help the animals rinse out their mouth. Looking at Finna's mouth over here at the right, we're getting a good view inside his mouth. He's got lots and lots of teeth. Fish going in. Is she chewing? No, she's not. Yet she has teeth. The interesting thing about uh, dolphin teeth is that they are all cone-shaped. They have no flat teeth for chewing. All their teeth are made to grasp and grab their food. And it looks like uh, that's all the food for now. The trainers are wrapping up the session, and I'm sure they're extremely pleased. A very successful session. Uh, they got husbandry in there, a good body exam of each animal, and then lots and lots of energy there towards the end of the session.